Yeah, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa on a New Year day, and we're hoping that you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. We hope that you are not going to have a hangover anyway, because you <laughs> you went for a crossover. <laughs> crossover should not uh, give way to hangover. Okay, so um, uh, this New Year is looking up. Uh, we've just heard the president's uh, speech and all that, and then we've also heard that the refinery in Port Harcourt will start operations very, very soon. We've heard that uh, fuel will start getting to states as soon as possible. But this disturbing headline, for me it is disturbing, is that refinery rehabilitation is not to lead to immediate petrol price crash. Mm. I don't even know what that means. Because <laughs> if there is availability of fuel, there should be a crash. But like the last guest said, um, our own uh, demand and supply laws do not do not um, permit that. They, 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 do not, they do not conform with international ones. Mm -hmm. Whatever we see in the international scene may not be what is obtainable right. here. But we have a guest to talk about this. Dr. Lord Mefo, a political analyst, is on the show this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program, Dr. Mefo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my brother and sister. Happy New Year to you. Good morning, Nigerians. <laughs> I think I should uh, start um, uh, with a word of encouragement to say to Nigerians, uh, Happy New Year. Happy um, New Year, sir. I'm happy we made it to 2024. Um, uh, not all of us, but uh, a significant number of Nigerians crossed over. Mm -hmm. That is something to cheer about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they should think it there. They, they shouldn't despair too much. They should they know that uh, when things get uh, too bad, they can only get uh, better. Mm. Uh, it's unfortunate that um, nobody manages in Nigeria for national development. Uh, what appears to be going on is a systematic class fraud. And um, uh, we, we need uh, the um, opposition party, the NLC, all of them to get up um, to their game and they begin to check the excesses of government. That is why they exist anywhere in the world. Mm. Okay, uh, things are looking up. Um, I'm tempted to talk about the speech of the, the president that mentioned some things, but right now we're talking about um, uh, fuel or petrol or petroleum uh, generally. We're, they say the refinery is, um, is up and running and uh, a lot of uh, this fuel will be distributed soon to states and all that. But the worrisome thing is that even after the rehabilitation, it is not a promise that the price of petrol will be slashed. I'd like to hear uh, what your thoughts are on this. Yes, uh, when uh, some people speculated that uh, the coming on stream of uh, the Dangote refinery, the, uh, our own uh, local refineries, would uh, translate to um, a significant uh, lowering of the uh, pump price of fuel. Uh, I didn't share the optimism, and there are reasons for it. Um, first and foremost, if you take it from uh, the Dangote angle, he's a private investor, and uh, you don't know what his ambitions are, you know, maybe to become uh, the world's uh, richest man. So the local economy is not really his concern. Whatever he can do to um, get maximally off the system, he would. And that has been uh, uh, the trend of uh, the Dangote um, conglomerate. You can see the war between uh, the Dangote cement and the Bua cement. You know, Bua is trying to bring that. Dangote cement is not uh, letting go. They want to stay up there. And that is capitalism for you. Now, uh, as per our own um, local refineries, particularly what I call and uh, Kaduna, well, you, you see, uh, first and foremost, we uh, need to understand that uh, uh, we have uh, accepted certain policies uh, imposed on us by, um, by the international uh, bodies, particularly IMF and uh, the World Bank. They wouldn't uh, want uh, Nigeria to go the route we are uh, looking at. Otherwise, uh, the country wouldn't have been uh, forced to accept uh, total removal of uh, fuel uh, subsidy without uh, making any uh, preparations. What I mean is that the same reason um, Nigerians uh, were forced to buy uh, fuel for uh, between uh, six, six, uh, uh, 40 and uh, 700 
as at now, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, it's the same reason the, the price uh, will not come down. What that means is that the local refineries will have to take the good at uh, the prevailing uh, international uh, market rate. So the only thing you will manage to say is, um, is, uh, is uh, the marginal cost on, on landing, that is uh, uh, transportation, bringing it down to Nigeria, um, as we have been doing over, over time. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, if you understand this, there is also another point you need to take into consideration. Don't forget that Nigerian uh, uh, future crude production, uh, much of it has uh, been uh, sold uh, up front. What I mean by that is that uh, uh, the you know, future production means the crude we are going to produce today, tomorrow, upward of uh, many uh, months and, uh, and years to come have actually demonstrated to take some loans. You know, what that means is that you can't even uh, engage uh, so much in what you call um, crude uh, swap, um, uh, because uh, what you produce is not uh, sufficient to meet your international obligations. Since uh, you have mortgaged um, part of your production uh, uh, it, it, to uh, enable you to take uh, some money up front, or take some facilities up front. You know, Nigerians, uh, many Nigerians don't know this, but that, these are the issues that you must um, read, you know, before you can arrive at uh, something that will give you a clear picture of what is going on. What the lawyers would call a community reading, you know, that is you bring uh, so many factors together, look at them holistically, to be able to make sense out of it. Then do not also forget that um, we can't even do what Angola has done. Angola just exist, exited uh, OPEC. Nigeria cannot exit OPEC because uh, there is no need for it. And the reason being that you, you can't even meet uh, production of your OPEC quota. We are still uh, grossly underproducing. You know, our, our quota at a point was as high as 2.3. It was brought down to 2. Uh, 2.1 because we were not really producing up to that and it was brought down further to about 1.8 i don't know where it is at the moment but even at that we are still not meeting that opec quota now remember what uh, the nsa told us recently he said that uh, you know up to 400 thousand uh barrels of nigerian crude is stolen is still stolen daily now let us uh, leave uh, aside for a moment uh, the fact that uh, it is the duty of uh, the NSA to stop it. Yeah, but it's also good he told us what was going on there. What does that tell you? There is a big cabal, a big, a very big cartel that is stealing Nigerian oil. And you see, to get Nigerian oil, you have to bring in your vessel into Nigerian waters. And you cannot bringing a vessel into Nigerian waters without approval. Nigerian Navy is there, and other maritime uh, uh, regulatory agencies, they are there uh, with their satellite covering Nigerian waters, and yet vessels come in and load Nigerian food illegally to sell at the black market, in the international market. You see, Nigerian crude, you know, which is called uh, Bonnie Light, has it has a DNA. What that means is that our oil is not like any other oil you would find. It also means that wherever you find Nigerian crude, you will recognize it. And it is sold in the international market. So there is a cartel of uh, both Nigerians, you know, including Nigerians, and international, uh, international uh, conglomerates that buy, you know, that demand and supply. You know, the, the Nigerian, Nigerian officials are supplying these people, and the officials should be high up there, because if they are not high up there, you cannot bring in a, a, a vessel that, you know, some of these vessels are so huge that it will take up to two weeks to fully load them, and they will load without challenge and leave Nigerian workers. What that means is that if Nigeria is producing, you know, producing a two million um, barriers per day, you know, significant amount of that 
up to 90 percent perhaps 40 percent of that daily production goes into servicing these uh, uh, these, uh, these, these uh, illegal criminal uh, organization and the third aspect is that nigerian officials are involved evidently so because you can't enter Nigerian waters without approval. It's impossible. The Navy will see it. The Navy will not permit it. So if the Navy allows it, it means that the Navy, the Navy will got authorization to allow the vessel. That is just the simple truth. So you can say that you are underproducing, not because you cannot produce enough, but it's because somehow Nigerian government and authorities allow part of your daily production to go into illegal channels. It's criminal, but that is where we are. So coming back finally to what you are talking about, the price of uh, coming down. It, it's not likely to come down. Even if it does, it's going to be marginal. Very, very marginal. That is uh, arguing uh, from the point of view that uh, uh, the fuel is now locally produced and uh, we are no longer importing because when you import you have to pay for landing you know the landing cost the yeah. transportation cost which, okay. you know literally okay uh, so you can argue that okay, okay so going I, I, say, i'm, I'm going to ask um right now we know okay it's just port Harcourt refinery and dangote refinery who is a private um it was a private sector but how about we introduce Wari Refinery, Kaduna Refinery? If all of those refineries starts to produce, are we going to see a, a very good drop in the price of this petroleum product? You, you, you're not likely to see because they will be sold crude at the prevailing international market mm. rate. And I've already told you why you can't even go into crude as well. You know, Nigerian crude oil production, future production, you know, part of it is already mortgaged. It takes on facilities like loans and so on and so forth. Many Nigerians don't know this. So regardless but of whether we're producing here or not, even with our other refineries? You know, that is, what you will produce in future has already been sold up front mm. by the Buhari administration. You need to investigate this. That's where you are. You know, so... The country, the country was actually run in a ground, a ground by the Buhari administration. And unfortunately, the Tinubu presidency is not faring any better because they are not addressing the excesses of the Buhari administration. They are rather accentuating, escalating, continuing with it. That's the tragedy. And you don't have a position party, you don't have NLC to stand in the gap for Nigerians. You don't have. Because it is the duty of the opposition party to raise a man. What I am saying now is what the opposition party ought to articulate. Show Nigerians how much has been mortgaged. Mm. You know, we, we, if you took a loan, for example, to sell Nigerian crude in advance, the crude you have not even produced, you have already sold, collected the money, mm. you know, or used it as a collateral to collect a loan. Where is the loan? Where are the projects? You know, right. we, we, we call, we once called for international uh, forensic audit to give us an idea of what has happened in uh, the NNPC. Nobody, nobody, nobody took that seriously. Uh, mm -hmm. Rather, they have uh, retained the uh, Melekiari mm -hmm. as uh, the group managing director. What does that tell you? It means they are satisfied with what NL, NL, uh, uh, NLPC Limited is doing. And if they argue that, um, uh, that the uh, NLPCL is now a, a, com a little liability company. Nigeria is still owning the place of represent. So the president has the power to reconstitute the place, as oh. he just did. So mm -hmm. ask yourself, why did he retain the uh, Right. if he doesn't believe that he's doing uh, the, what the government wants? Mm -hmm. So if you can see, you can see why I am saying that Nigerians are not are just thrown under the bus. Nobody is managing for national development. Mm. They are pandering to what the international uh, system wants, particularly the World Bank and IMF. The, you remember right from the days of uh, the military, the World Bank and IMF, they, they had insisted, and insisted that Nigeria and the first subsidy must go. Right. So Kimbo did that. He did that without any preparations, just to get into their they are good books. Remember, as at that time, his case was still in the court. Right. So he was trying to gain uh, 
acceptance mm. from everywhere. You know, he, he mm. even went to Echo once for and became yeah, the chairman. Well, I, 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 you have yeah. raised you have raised concerns that uh, will need to be discussed as an, as independent topics as it is. But right now, we run out of time and. Uh, You've painted a picture, and if, if I must say, it's very gloomy. But um, we're, we just want to be hopeful for 2024. Uh, we're hoping that we're going to experience less of the pain that we experienced in 2023 mm -hmm. in this new year. We'd like to thank you I for being I, a part. You know, that, that's yeah. my hope. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'll just take one word. Yeah. That's my hope. All right. But I want you to read the Bloomberg uh, report on Nigeria. We will. They don't share your optimism, mm. and they will give you all the details. All right. All right. Thank you thank so, you so much, much, Doctor, for uh, coming thank on you. the show this morning. Uh, Happy New Year. Thank Happy to New Year to you. Same year, my brother. Yeah. All right. We'll be talking to Dr. Lome for uh, a public affairs analyst. He was talking about the fact that there's a possibility that even with uh, the revamping of the refinery in Port Harcourt, the price of petrol may not come down. The fears of Nigerians uh, are becoming a reality right now. But we will still be hopeful. This is 2024, yes. mm -hmm. and we refuse to be downcast by anything. Nothing that will steal our joy. So, yeah. yeah, happiness is a choice, like we said when we were closing uh, last year. But this year we have come again, and we're saying the same thing. Let's choose to be happy this year, but let's also choose to do the right thing. Right. Thank you so much for being a part of this show on the first day of the year 2024. We'll meet again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paulson. Happy New Year once again, and I wish you an amazing 2024. Good morning. <laughs>